Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today is going to be the compacted and full review of the Isero watercolour paints. These are watercolours made by the Isero paint company based in Belgium. I did two separate videos already covering these two paints. Both of the videos were done in real time so you can see my real time reactions to the paint. I will leave a link to the swatching up in the iCards, so make sure you go check that out if you want to see my first ever thoughts, how I, how I felt about these paints as I put paint to paper. If you would like to see more, please consider checking out my website where I sell my handmade paints and also some artwork and print. I will leave a link to my website down in the description bar below. This is a website that I set up to showcase my artwork and sell a few things. You can also view my gallery on there too. Alternatively you can also check me out on Patreon where you can get a few extra bits including monthly dot card rewards of my handmade watercolours and commercial brands. Again I will leave the link down in the description bar below if you would like to consider checking that out. So I chose six colours from the Isera range to paint and play with. These were Pyrrol Red, made with PR254, Isero Pink, PR122, Indanthrone Blue, PB60, Phalo Blue, PB15, colon 3, Isero Yellow, PY154, and Chartreuse, which is made with PY129. I went for a split primary selection of colours and I poured a few dots out into a palette. The paints dried quite well in the palette and they rewetted quite well too. They weren't the most easiest to rewet as such as Sennelier but at the same time they didn't take a lot of work to rewet. I guess they're a little bit comparable to the way Schmincke dries. They take a little bit of paint water to get the paint going but it doesn't take an awful lot of work to get a good colour payoff. As you can see from the swatches here they are really bright and vibrant colours. They've got a really nice pigment load and they're mostly transparent the colours that I've chosen here. I've done two mixing wheels here. One with warm colours, one with cool see how well they mix with each other and as you can see they mix superbly with each other you can get some really nice colours from mixing these colours together. So on first thoughts these colours are really amazing I'm really enjoying them so far just from swatching them out. So a little bit of info about the Isero watercolours these are a Belgian brand of watercolours. They're pretty new to the online markets, only really appearing in the last year or two on Jackson's. You can order these both on Jackson's or from the Isro website. I will leave links down below in the description bar to both places where you can get these colours. They're offered in 7ml tubes, so they are a little bit more pricier off the bat than most watercolour brands due to the extra milliliter or two in there. However they're not super expensive, I find them a fairly decent price. There are also some sets that you can get with Isero colours in tubes and they can also be found on the website or through Jackson's. Isero offers 60 different colours in their range. There are quite standard colours in there really. There are no special pigments that they only offer uniquely to them, such as like the Daniel Smith company do. However, there are also some effect paints that they offer. There's sort of five or six tubes of effect paints which are metallic, which they look quite fun. I haven't tried any yet though. These colours also lift fairly decently. You can glaze with them, they're not going to lift crazily if you try and glaze with them, but you can lift them if you so wish to. 
So on now to the painting demonstration. Again, I've done this one also in a video in real time, which I will link up in the iCards above. The full time of the painting was around three hours. So I and I have condensed this down in this video to around six minutes. So um, you're seeing quite a lot in quite a short space of time. These paints really do work wonderfully together. I really love the behavior of these paints. There's something really nice about them. They're quite smooth, they're quite bright, they're quite, they just feel really nice to work with. I enjoy the process of this painting from start to finish. I felt these paints worked super well together and they behaved as I expected them to. In terms of comparison, I would probably compare these somewhere between a Schmincke and Sennelier paint. The feel of the paint feels a bit like the two of them had a child together. They're not as syrupy and sticky as Sennelier, but at the same time they've got a bit more to them, a bit more brightness and more vibrance to them than the Schmincke paints. There weren't any nasty surprises with this paint brand. They were quite nice, quite predictable and behaved as one would expect. Now the downside to this is obviously there's no nice surprises either. The paint is quite predictable and behaved in a way that's not really going to surprise you too much. Whereas there are some brands out there that will be a little bit quirky. There isn't really any quirkiness to this paint. Paint layers well and I can achieve really nice bright and vibrant colours in mixing and with layering the paint. The paint itself has a nicer flow to it and isn't really prone to having too many backgrounds which is quite nice. Again it's not the most flowy paint that I've tried out there. I do find Sennelier has a bit more movement in water than the Isero colours. Paints here dry pretty smoothly and just have a really nice look to them. They're not overly shiny or overly vibrant like I know some brands can be, so you can layer these on top of one another quite a lot. Sometimes some brands such as Old Holland or Sennelier, if you over glaze them and put paint on too thickly, they can have this kind of sheen to them. You don't get this with this brand and they behave and look quite nicely on the paper. There's also not too much of a drying shift, the colours dry almost the same as they go down. I don't have any paints here that granulate, so I can't tell you how, how they behave with granulation. I have heard though that their cadmium colours are really nice and they're not as heavy as some other brands with their cadmiums, which is really nice if you like cadmium paints. Again, unfortunately I don't have any of those here to try. You can see here how bright and vibrant colours you can get here with the leaves. Those greens are so bright and vibrant, they're nearly neon. At the same time, they're not uncomfortable to look at. I know some cool colours can mix greens that are really unnatural looking, but I think these are really bright and vibrant while still holding a kind of natural look. The chartreuse I use here to mix the, the warm green is a really nice colour, and it's a lot of people's favourite colour from this brand as well. PY129 is a interesting mix. It's a greenish yellow and it's just a really nice yellow to use in some botanical subjects. So at this point in the video, if you're familiar with my videos, you probably noticed by now that I've not mentioned anything negative about these paints. And being honest, it's hard to find negative things about these paints. They really are just really good all round paints. The only negatives I can think of are that they don't have any 
unique pigments like some brands have and there's not a large range like some brands have too. Another thing that may be a bit of a disadvantage is that these paints are not widely available across the planet. The only place I can find them either on their website or through Jackson's. I don't know currently if they sell paint uh, US or Canadian branch at all. I think if you live outside of Europe, the best place to get these for you is probably going to be Jackson's. I can definitely recommend these paints to people if you'd like to try something a bit different. These paints really are just really nice paints all around. I know I keep saying it, but I can't really find any way other way to say it, how to sum up how amazing they are. I really recommend if you've got the budget to maybe try a few of these out, even if it's just like a primary triad like I have done here. I know these paints are a little bit more pricier on the offset just because they are in larger tubes, but the paint really does go a long way as it's really vibrant. Please do let me know down in the comment sections if you've tried this paint and what you feel about it. I'm interested to hear your thoughts as this is obviously not such a common brand, such as other brands like Winsor & Newton and Daniel Smith. So this brings us to the end of the video now, and I will leave a scan of all of the things you can see here in the video up on my Patreon page. If you want to go check that out, there is a link down in the description bar. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. Please leave a like and a comment, and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. Take care everybody, and bye bye.